get down to business once again. Welcome back, Ground Zero Salem, last days with a Z. About to kick off right now is Xandral, Visions of Rotting Darkness, demos from 83 to 88. German band, German heavy metal. You might think it's uh, maybe some kind of proto-black stuff, judging by the title and the packaging there, but no, it's just great, great, straightforward, cruising along. Powerful ass metal. Never know how loud this is going to turn out. Also, with this uh, this new app that attaches to my camera, or rather my webcam, um, I uh, I haven't figured out the the levels yet. It seems to be kind of quiet. Whatever, technical stuff that you don't care about. So we're going to talk about CDs. I have a shit ton, as usual, to talk about that if just kind of grown like poisonous fungi all over the basement down here uh, over the past half a year so I'm gonna get into them uh, let's see well as a middle-aged white dude with a small digital platform very small I'm required to talk about the new Iron Maiden so let's get it out of the way Senjutsu actually this uh this is the first Iron Maiden I've bought since I don't even know probably no prayer for the dying um, and I'm not sure why. I think it's a combination of like boredom and everybody just uh, starting to emerge from the whole COVID thing, going to Target with their family. and That's what it was for me. I mean, I don't know. I don't know uh, why I cared about buying this more than their last one or the one before it. I actually don't hate it. That's really all I have to say about it. That's my hot take is it's adequate. I don't hate it. You know, it's not going to be... The Iron Maiden of yesteryear year with like the really fast blazing parts. It's kind of mid-tempo all the way through. I actually find it very meditative and relaxing. Um, I found I feel like some people lambasted a few aspects of it. Ob obviously the overlong songs everybody kind of complains about, but there's one of the big singles has like sort of like a Cinderella like kind of westerny bluesy kind of part, um, and a lot of people were saying like that's a new thing, but like. I kind of went on a little bit of a tear and got Fear of the Dark, and there's like there's a ton of cock rock on this record. I revisited this, I bought this when it came out, and was wildly disappointed, because the one that I got before it, No Prayer for the Dying, was my first one. Now a lot of people just kind of poo-poo this, say it's kind of lukewarm, there's some fun ass songs on it. There's a, it's kind of a return to form Iron Maiden record, you know? like. They'd come out of that, that synthy period with Somewhere in Time and uh, Seven Son of a Seven Son. It's kind of a back to basics Iron Maiden. And there's some great, I mean, Holy Smoke, great anti preacher song, anti TV preacher song, rather. Mother Russia, great way to close it out. Tail Gunner. Yeah, I know it's Aces High, too. It's not a bad thing to me. Um, just quick, punchy songs. Got those bouncy Steve Harris bass lines. Love it. So, I mean, yeah, I went on a little bit of an Iron Maiden tear. Because I've never been like the. A total Iron Maiden stan. I don't, you know, worship the hell out of them, but I'm a metal fan, so of course I have a lot of their records and love them, you know. Um, by the way, I forgot to mention, if you're a new viewer, my name is Pat and this is uh, Ground Zero of Salem. Welcome back. I am talking a mile a minute. I'm going Micro Machines guy on this, doing a bunch of updates in a row, because I'm going to be packing up this stereo probably within a day or two editing down a few videos, throwing stuff into a moving truck, and moving to Raleigh, North Carolina, um, where I might change the name of the channel. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments below. So we're going to talk about Maiden for a minute. I don't know. I bought all these Iron Maiden ones I don't own. Most of the stuff that uh, of their classic material I own on vinyl. Number of the Beast and Power Slave and all that stuff I have um, now packed up. But these... Uh, Later, Bruce records before he left for a while are pretty interesting to me. 
Um, especially vocally, like he sounds like a little worn out on this, like a little strained, and I, I kind of like it. And there, there's some, I mean, this, Fear the Dark has some crap on it. Uh, there's a, a bunch of cock rocky songs on it, like I said, but the good songs are really good. Be Quick or Be Dead is a great song. The title track is amazing. Afraid to Shoot Strangers is great. Fugitive is pretty good, but then you have songs like Weekend Warrior. Ugh. Um, yeah, but I mean, the title track is still one of my favorite Iron Maiden songs of all time, so. And then I got um, Brave New World. I heard this a bunch at my friend's house when this came out, but I never owned it. Um, Wicker Man gets all the respect it deserves. It's a, a popular song for a reason. Their return to form back in 2000, Return with Bruce. The rest of it's really strong, too. There's some really long songs, but they hold your attention, which is the bone to pick I've heard with all their stuff past this, is that a lot of it doesn't. Um, and all that stuff, I mean, I've, I've heard it here and there, but I've just not been remotely interested. Just something about this silly PS2 fighting game lenticular cover just grabbed my attention in Target. What can I say? Um, but yeah, Brave New World, really, really strong. Really, really great record. Um, nothing much else to say. And then I got, since I never owned Live After Death, I uh, picked that up. And it's just, I mean, it's a great best of of all their strongest material up until that point, you know, before they went down that synth route. Uh, songs about the wrong thing to do when a bird shits on you. It's a great one-liner. Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner there. And people kind of complain about Bruce's vocals being a little strained on this, but it's live, you know? Like, it's not going to sound like it does in the studio. I don't know. People are complaining about it. Sounds fine to me, really. There you have it. That's all the Iron Maiden I splurged on a month or so ago, a couple months ago. I just wanted to get that out of the way and talk about it. Then, uh... Just kind of go down the line here. Um, Vic Records. They're a reissue label out of Europe. And uh, they're always unearthing stuff I've never heard of and impressing the hell out of me. Case in point, this British death metal band, Gamora. Um, not your typical kind of Brit death metal. I don't get a cancer or benediction vibe from this, except maybe vocally. You know, those great, like almost polite death metal vocals with the accented, you know, like Barney Greenway. Um, it's, but it's got more of like a, almost a, a proggy technical thrash approach to the riffs with like a death metal gristle on the distortion. Very, very catchy, very like unrelenting. It's got three demo tracks that are a little bit more on the thrash side of things, you know, um, before they got a little bit heavier. But yeah, just this seven song record was all they did um, and I believe it might have been an early Colin Richardson production oh no Andy Sneap I guess was involved in the production of this so before he got super huge just out of his stint in Sabbath probably or during uh, then another Vic release this is the Toxic Demo Wasteland upstate New York represent thrash metal um, again one of those bands kind of like Atrophy where I'm like I remember the, none of these bands being anything special but when I'll go back and visit them they're better than I remembered um, maybe just because I haven't heard so much like retro thrash like in the 2000s and 2010s that was like really not great so the original generic bands sound better to my ears but all seriousness this is very good it's competent uh, great wailing vocals more the kind of like high pitched melodic vocal kind of thrash stuff from the mid 80s got some unreleased songs on it too which is nice eight tracks total competent thrash competent this is a boot ain't gonna lie beyond the unknown by incubus um didn't own this i had the other one fucking great thrashing death deathing thrash music from new orleans had to change their name later because of the pop rock modern rock group which i'm sure everybody's heard of but you know if you don't know this band and you're into this sort of stuff, where have you been? Uh, if you like Sepultura, Demolition Hammer, all that stuff kind of riding that crest between the two genres. Incubus will not disappoint. Then the Hanson Brothers, Sudden Death. So this is Ramon's Worship, total three chord, one, two, three, four, kind of stuff. Uh, but the guys dress up like hockey players and it has a bunch of references to the movie Slapshot and it features members of No Means No. Uh, kind of weird, quirky, arty punk band from Canada. 
great, great stuff. If you like Ramones and hockey, it's a perfect marriage for you. Uh, that Blood of Christ comp that I said I was waiting on as the rain gently falls, Anthology 2. This is uh, from the cusp of the 90s into the 2000s. As I mentioned previously, Blood of Christ was kind of an interesting mix of like kind of dreary doom death in the peaceful rain vein and um, black metal a little bit with some of the shriekiness of the vocals and like almost slamming heavy brutal death metal with the just kind of the, the tempo changes going on and everything. It, it, at times it sounds like suffocation, at times it sounds like My Dying Bride. At times it was almost kind of like early emperor. You know, really interesting style that I like. This things are kind of blended a little bit more. There's less of a just a jagged juxtaposition of like tempos and stuff. It's got a little bit more of a groove to it. Um, it's a comp compilation of a bunch of different stuff they recorded at the time. I don't believe it's one solid album. It's uh it's good. It's good. I don't like it as much as that other stuff that I talked about, but it's good. Rude! Burning Many Mirrors. Uh, British black metal band on 20 Buck Spin. Good stuff. Um, it's got a lot of, a couple of different styles. Uh, not as adept at like getting into like breaking down what black metal bands sound like as far as comparisons, but I will say that there's a fair amount of like traditional heavy metal sort of like leads and melodies going on, kind of woven in with a lot of uh, like kind of heavier black metal. It's it's not like that really necrotic lo-fi black metal. It's really well produced. It's good. But what is necrotic and lo-fi is this album that I've been wanting for quite a while from Mexico's Dark Half. This is a 90s release. Really long songs on this, um, particularly the last one. Actually, the last one is the really long song. The rest are normal length, but uh, Death Comes True, almost nine minutes. But man, talk about like just, as I mentioned before, that like great mortuary and Shabnagura, like that sort of like Mexican death metal thing where it's like a combo amp set on fire and then like time turned backwards, back masking. It's Show No Mercy by Slayer riffs. <laughs> like it's just super, I don't know, just visceral, gristly, staticky ugly, ugly, ugly recording and, and just shadowy, echoey growls. It's awesome. I love Dark Half. I've been wanting this for a really long time. Next stack. Alright, so this is a give this one a shot again kind of deal. Fear Factory remanufacture. Demanufacture. Reissue with remanufacture on disc two. Um, so I got this when it came out. I hated it. It was one of those. I love Soul of a New Machine. Um, that was an inventive, fresh approach to death metal at the time, kind of mechanized in a way that Godflesh wasn't, a little bit more upbeat, you know, um, kind of like melodic vocals, but were really creepy. This I just remember <coughs> reminding me a lot of Pantera and Machine Head and Hater. Looking back on it, not so much. Um, I, sonically, there are some similarities with those other bands that I just mentioned, but way heavier. Um, vocals have been cleaned up out of a growl to a more of a shout, but, and there's more melodic vocals, but the melodic vocals are so weird, and such a direct descendant of, like, a lot of post-punk and, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of post-punk and goth stuff. Uh, I know that they went, like, pretty new metal after this, but it's pretty fucking heavy, you know, it doesn't have the new metal, like, detuned to the point, or downtuned to the point where the the guitar strings are falling off the guitar and it's like a 17 string bass like it's not that at all it's mechanized like thrashy death metal stuff with like some post-punk touches and it's, it's quite good this too is like all these electronic remixes i think reese fulber was involved with that's it's not bad you know it's not really what i'm in the mood for right now i will also mention that they do a flawless cover of your mistake by agnostic front on this it sounds great so cool to go back to this it's it's pretty pretty fucking good um assorted heap and a couple of assorted heap cds german band this was reissued on vic uh the early stuff the experience of horror it's kind of death thrashy sort of stuff really extreme thrash with uh the killing peace demo which is like almost like uh that proto black kind of like early early teutonic thrash kind of sound on it real nasty sounding 
Um, fairly technical on the, the full length material on this, you know, it's still straightforward. Mind Waves is when they get kind of weird. They get kind of uh, technical, kind of death human and onward-ish on it. Um, growly vocals, but some other vocal approaches as well that are very, very cool. Um, great band that I, I think I heard the name, because like, how do you forget a name like Assorted Heap? But beyond that, I didn't know anything about them, and it's good. What I was not feeling so much is uh, the new Hour 13, which is a bummer, because Hour 13 were one of my favorite Doom bands from the aughts. I love the Phil Swanson stuff, especially. Um, this is just the same the same chief songwriter playing everything, Chad Davis on this. And some of the riffs are great. You know, he does have that creepy, repetitive thing that he always had on the earlier records, but unfortunately the vocals just, they just don't match up to what was going on before. And uh, I feel like there's, there's a lot of songs on this for a Doom record. I feel like two or three probably could be shaved off, you know? Just doesn't do it for me like uh, the first couple of records do, unfortunately. 100 Demons in the Eyes of the Lord, debut from this Connecticut hardcore band. A lot of metal trappings on this, a lot of metal aesthetics. Uh, the guitarist came from a death metal band from Connecticut called Tyrant Trooper, who's that guy's son is in Vomit Forth. Interesting little factoid for you there. And 100 Demons are part of that wave that's like post hate breed stuff that came out that's brutal heavy hardcore that has a lot of fast parts and some metal solos and stuff like that metal guitar tone kind of heavier throatier vocals but a lot of the stuff that makes hardcore great shorter songs songs about like personal struggles stuff like that very tough sounding stuff um the self-titled is also great the second record that came out a few years later the second one's a little bit more varied this one's a little bit more straightforward then you got uh, Forca, Forca or Forza Macabra. This is some Scandinavian dudes doing a worship of Brazilian hardcore, going along the lines of uh, uh, Baramia and Rado de Parau and all those greats, kind of doing stuff in that style. Um, maybe kind of streamlining it a little bit, you know, the production's a little bit better. Um, but very, very, very good stuff on this. A lot of songs too, like 30 songs. We got Youth of Today. This is We're Not In This Alone, Can't Close My Eyes, 12 inch and seven inch versions and bonus tracks that are live. Um, Youth of Today, seminal hardcore band, you know, kicked off the second wave of the whole straight edge stuff, the youth group stuff, if you didn't know. This is a, a bootleg CD of stuff that's ripped directly from vinyl. So it kind of sounds like shit. <laughs> it's uh, before, I think, ripping technology is where it's at today. There's a lot of crackles and uh, stuff kind of redlining out sound-wise, which in my opinion, like, kind of makes it sound awesome. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's fast, energetic, hardcore punk stuff. If you don't know Youth of Today, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, then we got Grotesque Infection. This is uh, another reissue from uh, The Growl. Uh, Cam there and CDN did together. This is like early, really swampy, disgusting death metal stuff from Niagara Falls. Uh, really predating a lot of really gory, like toilet flushy kind of death metal shit. Very early on. Played in the, the Buffalo scene pretty extensively. Solid, you know, raw recording demo stuff. Then you got Cost of Christ, Can't Relate. So, long, uh, semi like compilation of to semi discography rather of a lot of cost of christ stuff cost of christ pittsburgh band uh, pretty sure they called it a day they had members of submachine and house rotten big in the 2000s um good good stuff for people into like poison idea um motor heady kind of stuff not quite crusty there's more of like a rock and roll meets early 80s hardcore kind of thing going on but certainly appealing to crusty types sound sonically Another band like that, not Crust, but a lot of Crust fans, Nine Shocks Terror, same era, late 90s into late 2000s, they were around. Heavily influenced by a lot of Japanese hardcore, uh, complete paint peeling, just larynx, larynx scraping vocals. Just sounds like his fucking throat's gonna fall out. Uh, lots of really nice, noodly rock and roll bass work from Tony Erba. One of my favorite bands from the era, crazy live. Um, insanely loud, really, really fast. Ex 
excellent, excellent hardcore stuff. Some good solos in there. Uh, a lot of people were introduced to Japanese hardcore from Nine Shocks. That's one box. All right. Then we got Battle Roar, Age of Chaos. European band, uh, I think Italian. Uh, sound a lot like... Uh, Manila Road at times, a lot of like kind of epic sort of acoustic stuff going on, you know, setting up the whole the whole vibe for the battle and roaring in it. Um, just kind of like more like straightforward power metal, not the real glossy kind, almost like more American power metal than European. Uh, but yeah, just fantasy themed, triumphant, fucking heavy metal stuff. Uh, Mark Sheldon guests on some stuff on here. Produced very well. Came out. 2005 on Black Lotus. Includes a live DVD, which I'll probably never watch. Cyclone Brutal Destruction. Another booty boot boot. Uh, this is, I believe, a Netherlands band from the mid 80s. Uh, man, I don't want to steal Aaron's shit, but like, look at the mustaches on the, these guys. It's like four out of five have really sweet mustaches. It's great. Oh, and two matching Exodus shirts as well. As well, yeah. This is this is good. I think it's a kind of a solid mix of like American style Bay Area thrash and um, like the German stuff. Really, it's got a little bit more of a clean, like punky kind of feel at times, and also has sort of like a snarly kind of European thing going on too. Really, really good thrash. Also, really good thrash. This is the DBC demos collection. Dead brain cells. Started out as like almost like straight up crossover, kind of metal tinged hardcore, going into weirder, more jagged riffs later on that brings to mind Countrymates Voivod, who had a massive influence on a lot of bands from their area. Um, both DBC records are great. Um, the second one, Universe, is a little bit more of the, that weird proggy kind of style, but this is a cool kind of progression, seeing where they were every year, how they kind of uh, transmogrified themselves into the 90s. The latest demo, the last demo on this is from 91, the first is from 86. Came out on Dive Bomb Recordings this year. Then we got a couple of CDs by Scarp, who are Seattle people. Um, very heavy death metal influenced grind, but also very like short and, to the fa short and fast and to the point kind of punkish approach as well. One of those kitchen sink bands, I feel like, you know, there's a little bit of death metal, a little bit of black metal, but also, like, they also have, like, ska parts and stuff, you know, really, uh, really throwing everything at the wall that'll stick, and most of the time it does, like, it's pretty effective. Um, great snarling, pissed off vocals, most songs are quick and to the point. They were around for quite a while, from the late 90s up until the late 2000s, they might even still be around, I'm not even sure, uh, but both of these are great. This one's called Barrier Dead, and this one came out on Alternative Tentacles, it's called Requiem. Infernal Majesty, Demon God. This is a later recording by Infernal Majesty. They're one of those great bands that just never lost the plot. You know, they went into hiatuses and whatnot and uh, never really changed their sound in a way that detracted from their original vision, it seems like. Um, from None Shall Defy onward, they've had this really interesting, um, kind of well-woven riff work that's somewhat technical, but not in a show-off-y way. Kind of harkens to, like, the, a lot of the, like, more evil side of thrash and heavy metal, like, Merciful Fate and, like, early Slayer and stuff like that, but bringing it into, like, a death metal context. Uh, just a great band, and they got a little bit more death metal vocal-wise on this one, Demon God, which originally came out in, um... 2007, I want to say. They have a demo that goes back to 1997. Um, and this is great. I've, I've heard a bunch of other stuff. They only seem to get props for None Shall Defy, but everything I've heard by them is really, really good. Great Canadian band. Cathedral. End Time. Um, interesting because this is one of the few Cathedral releases that doesn't have Dave Patchett artwork. I think it's Steve O'Malley did it. Uh, one of the guys from Southern Lord. This is a little bit of like, I feel like Cathedral sort of attempting a return to form to like Forest of Equilibrium, but having member changes and stuff and 
probably over a decade under their belt of like doing other types of shit. Um, it doesn't quite get there, but it's way gloomier and way more serious than their records preceding it. Um, it's it's heavy, it's it's doomy and slow, but it's still got a little bit more of like a hippy trippy thing going on than uh, Forest did. Uh, Forest is just untouchable for me for, as far as a doom record goes. This is, uh, I think, right around 2000 this came out. 2001, Honey Rake. Got a couple of CDs by The Black. Swedish Black Metal, Black Blood, the demo. Ooh, sorry about the glare there. And Priest of Satan. I think they're only full length until they did one way later into the 2000s. Um, I'd heard of this band for years. I've seen friends of mine rep their shirts and stuff. Figured I'd pick it up. And it's just great raw black metal. Um, particularly enjoy the keyboard work on it. It sounds really like off in the distance and eerie and weird and i find that the black like they, there's plenty of melodic elements but they don't have the same sort of approach to melodicism that a lot of their countrymen do um it's almost feels more norwegian than swedish but as a somebody that's like kind of a black metal pleb like take what i say with a huge grain of salt but that's how it hits my ears you know i like the demo stuff better some songs on both um demo came both of these were issued by osmos Torture Beyond the Veil, another Vickery issue. I just buy them all up. Uh, this band was from Europe. I want to say they were German. Could be wrong. Uh, pretty bludgeoning, heavy, heavy death metal with some doom trappings. They they do some weird stuff with like just like odd like harpsichord piano and like kind of growling over it. Like it's uh it seems like that they're kind of trying to go for the peaceful thing again but like failing but it being just as cool you know like uh but interesting because it's way more of like a real like nasty almost like infester like early cannibal corpse vibe but like trying to lurch towards doom death kind of it's uh it's a cool listen it's good and we got infestation the antecedent so this is uh, what's his name there? DeSalvio, the second vocalist for Cryptopsy. His old band from Massachusetts. This is both of the both of the demos reissued on one CD. Uh, let's see, yeah, Mike DeSalvo. And uh, I know like he got some criticism for on and then you'll beg like sounding more like a hardcore guy. Um, but his stuff on this is is like very competent, straight up death metal growls. Very good. Um, it's pretty like stompy, mid-paced, heavy, kind of brutal death metal of the era. It doesn't really stand out that much from what else was going on, but it, there is a certain something to a lot of the death metal that was coming out of Massachusetts in the mid to late 90s, where it was starting to reach towards that, a little bit starting to reach towards that sort of brutal with two O's kind of territory, uh, but also retaining this really kind of dismal sort of atmosphere. I feel like Eternal Suffering had that and a bunch of others from the area, so. Um, sorry about the shake. Um, so infestation fits right in that. How are we doing on time? All right, plenty of time, plenty of time. Also, dipping my toes in even more black metal here. Mork greening, grinding? Mork grinding. I just, I know Mork means something in, what is it, Swedish? It means dark or, or whatever it means. All I can think of is fucking Robin Williams. I'm sorry, I'm a child. Uh, these are great, great records. Uh, this is in a language I don't speak. There you go. You enjoy that right there. Take a look. And then uh, Return Fire is the second one. <coughs> really enjoy the debut more than Return Fire. This is such a quick fucking punch in the nuts. It's awesome. It's um, just really fast. Um, no compromise, no stop. Like, just full throttle black metal stuff. Pretty stripped down, awesome. Return Fire gets a little bit more black thrash. Um, you know, there's a little bit more like uh, kind of mid-paced sort of riffing here and there. It's also very, very fast, but I mean, second wave BM, good stuff, good stuff. It's, it's definitely enjoyable shit. We got Rod and Christ, Triarchy of the Lost Lovers. One of my best vocal clubs ever was uh, me accidentally calling this 
Triarchy of the Lost Luggage. Um, and I think of it as that ever since. This is a reissue with this kind of annoying Obi strip here that doesn't really do anything. Uh, I bought, this is another one. Bought it when it came out, hated it. My head was in a different place. I remember it being way, way more like gothy. It's not. It's it's pretty much classic Rotting Christ that's a little bit more evenly paced. Um, it takes a little bit more time to let the riffs breathe and the melodies breathe. But it's it's that, that great melancholic, melodic riff work that um, Saki and these guys are known for. It is, it's a great, great album. Um, I like it just as a... If I don't stop bumping the fucking camera, I like it just as much as the ones preceding it. <coughs> Almost done. Almost done. Picked up some motorheads I didn't have. We are Motorhead. Sacrifice. Uh, sacrifice. Great album. Right up there with Bastards for that like mid 90s, mid to late 90s Motorhead stuff. Uh, maybe this was the last one with Wurzel, actually, because I know it comes after Bastards, and he's he's on there. Um, yeah, I mean, again, like, not too much boogie rock on this one. A lot of straightforward stuff. Sex and Death, like, that's a great, like, just anthemic one. Really punk-sounding Motorhead number. Great, real full, loud production on this. Sacrifice, one of the best Motorhead songs of any era, easily. And then We Are Motorhead, which is a good one. It's a fun one. Um, I don't think there are any bad Motorhead records, so you're not going to get that out of me anyway. Um, particularly Stay Out of Jail, their version of the Sex Pistols, God Save the Queen. Awesome. Better than the original, in my opinion. We Are Motorhead. Again, it's one of those, like, they have their, like, four or five blueprints, their four or five, like, kind of archetypes of their songs. We Are Motorhead is, like, a, an Ace of Spades one, you know? And it's a great song. Wasp, Double Live Assassins. I've been really into Wasp lately. And this is a good, like, well-produced live record that has all the hits. It was recorded in 97, so, you know, you've got stuff from Crimson Isle on here as well as uh, the first two, you know, and they kick it out on this. It's so good. Um, the Last Command songs are great. It even kicks off with a medley, which is perfect, and I don't mind it at all. It's just, like, all the fucking hits, like, you know, a bunch of them anyway in a row. Um... Yeah, this, this sounds great. The song Kill Ahead, that's a deep cut I, I wasn't familiar with, and it's awesome. They sound great on this. Blackie sounds perfect. Satan, Court in the Act. Not much to say. It's a NWO BHM classic, perfect record. Uh, I actually had the newer ones on CD, um, the, the re post-reunion ones that are both excellent. So I wanted to pick this up. It's got a nice slipcase. You know, it's just classic, melodic. British heavy metal. What else do you need to know? Just, yeah, flip this over. How good is this, by the way? This Zandville thing. I just kind of bought it on a whim. Then we got the Abhorrence reissue, which I already own on vinyl, but I saw it and I just couldn't couldn't leave it on the shelf. It looked so lonely. So, I mean, Abhorrence, if you don't know, pre-amorphous, uh, classic Finnish stuff, completely vulgar. Uh, what's nice about this, it's got the original 7-inch, which is awesome, murky, kind of atonal, weird, Finnish death metal stuff. Then uh, some demo stuff, which is also very good. And then the live stuff, and the live, actually, the live stuff's actually worth it. It sounds, sounds great. Um, the rehearsal stuff is good, too. But, yeah. Get yourself some abhor abhorrence, man. This was a little, di little disappointing. Hillchild, Bearskin. This is a Japanese band. Uh, hard to pin down song-wise. Howling Bull America put this out in 99. These guys had a split with um, Converge at one point. And I remember it being way more grindy than this is. At least I got about like three or four songs in. It was just like, eh. It was wicked groove metal. Um, kind of like some like kind of sung vocals that hit me the wrong way. I just uh, was not feeling it, so... I took it out of the player. I mean, I'll give it another shot at some point, but not anytime soon. Voivod, Kators, five bucks. I was ordering some other shit from Discogs and uh, Matt from Dark Path mentioned this recently. Said it was very punk and it is, but it wasn't the punk that I wanted. <laughs> it's more like, I don't know, like 
kind of melodic or like 70s punk mixed with Voivod, which is <laughs> kind of a gross, gross taste in my mouth. At least the first couple songs. The first couple songs are a little like yuck. Like I didn't like the choruses at all. Um, but then they kind of get into their groove and like start injecting more and more Voivod weirdness as the album progressive progresses, it seems to me. Jason Newstead played on this too. But um, yeah, I mean, I love classic Voivod. Uh, a lot of their recent stuff I'm not familiar with, and this just kind of like, this kind of missed me. But and, uh, along with uh, you know exploring all the metal stuff, like the straight up metal stuff I've been listening to, and picking up some best ofs. Don't have it in this box, but I also got a, a Running Wild one of these. But I like these noise comps; they seem to be well curated. <coughs> Seeing as how my tightest homies just keep talking about Halloween and will not stop. Uh, I figured I'd pick up this best of. This one is mostly stuff from uh, Walls of Jericho and Keepers 1 and 2. Um, and the second stuff is from Pink Bubbles Go Ape Onward. I believe... I'm trying to remember which one's which. I don't even know who's singing on this. Um, the classic vocalist was... Kiski. And I can't remember the other guy's name. Whatever. I had read up on this and like tried to commit it to memory beforehand i don't give a fuck whatever the original vocalist it's a little less like syrupy you know they get very very european power metal later on and that's fine i i mean i could probably get into that eventually it's just if i'm gonna listen to traditional heavy metal i like a little i like a little bit of grit in it all the stuff on cd1 i love i, I was already well familiar <coughs> with walls of jericho and uh really really dig it um so, you know, the later stuff, the Pink Bubble stuff is kind of weird, <laughs> you know. It's not as weird as I think people remember it being. Um, and then stuff beyond that, it's kind of eh, you know. Um, I know they're, they come back to, like, some former glory in the 90s and do, like, more melodic stuff. And everybody seems to be ranting and raving about how great the, uh, the self-titled, the new one is. I, I've, I've listened to it. It's, it's cool. I don't know if it's quite my thing. And then we've got Tankard. I mean, classic... Stein smashing German beer thrash um, There's a few like they, they kind of experiment with a few other styles of metal on this a little bit There's like even a song that's like approaching like some weird kind of trouble or cathedral doom on this I can't remember what song um, But it's uh, it's pretty good. You know, I mean out of all the well-known German thrash metal bands There's quite a few that I like more But I mean they're they're hot tracks on this are great, you know definitely knock a back for you to knock a few back to tankard knock a back for you Arr! and we've got unanimated ancient god of evil uh not official this is great um you know it's got the, it's that harsh melodic razor sharp swedish kind of black and death metal stuff that the swedes do oh so well you know I, i'd probably grab this rather than dissection half the time to be honest I really, really like this. Um, I don't even know. I might like this more than Debut, which just got reissued, by the way. Um, but yeah, this is, as far as this sort of melodic, evil kind of uh, death metal stuff, this is way, way, way the fuck up there. Along with Sacramentum and a host of others. Reverend, Gathering of Demons. Uh, unfortunately, I was a little bit disappointed by this. I have heard other records by Reverend. This is just like the last stuff that they did. Um, the original vocalist from Metal Church's band. This was uh, late 90s this came out? Something like that. Um, David Wayne. <coughs> Unfortunately, his vocals are so strained on this. I like strained, like traditional metal vocal kind of guys that are really pushing it and they sound like phlegmy and pissed. Like my favorite example is Bobby Blitz or like the guy from Blessed Death or whatever. Um, but he just sounds like he's pushing it a little bit too far on this, and it kind of detracts from it. The music's okay, you know, it's, it's like almost speed metal, kind of power metal-ish American heavy metal stuff, but I don't know. Not, not that great. Kind of pass on that. Then Pessimist. This just got reissued. Blood for the Gods. Uh, brutal death metal from the late 90s. To me, it's, it, yeah, it's got the, the extremity that, like, a lot of bands of that ilk at the time had, like Dying Fetus and all those, um, but th this seems more rooted in tradition to me. Um, there seems to be more of like, 
kind of morbid angel and more like thrash metal in it. It does have that like really pronounced bass sound that a lot of those bands seem to have at the time. A lot of the more brutal bands. I feel like this is the best record that they did. This is their third and final one. They do a couple of uh, covers on this. They do a creator cover on here, which is rad. Um, but yeah, solid late 90s DM. Technically proficient. Finally, Migos. Migos? Migos. Recommended to me by Lance. Uh, open season. I wasn't familiar with this band at all. Um, they were around in the early 2000s. Kind of a lot of like uh, Native American war themes and spiritual stuff going on lyrically. Um, really good shit. It was recommended to me because uh, apparently they're a big influence on Dungeon Serpent, who I like a lot. And it's uh, it's like melodic death metal in a way that like I haven't really heard. Um, in some ways, it kind of reminds me of like a little bit of like Bolt Thrower, but way more... Uh, a lot of, like a lot more melodic passages that are sort of trem picked. Um, it's got that sort of like mid paced crushing sort of thing that Asphyx and Bolt Thrower have, but way, way more like off the beaten path and twisty and turny. A lot of odd choices for riffs. And very, very fucking good. Very, very good, solid death metal. Um, doesn't sound like it was recorded in 2002 either. They looks like they had a real approach to like do like a traditional recording with like not as clicky kind of drums joel grind produced it way back when so good shit came out on i can't read that <laughs> came out on night rhythms in 2002 very good all right so this is appropriately long give you something to be tidied over with while i uh unpack my record room for months <laughs> See you on the other side. Later.